Yeah, it's that time of the year again. We got a zero overall rebuild. Rebuilding a zero overall team. As you can see, all zeros on the screen. Get this product placement out of here. Or pay me. Anyways. So, the deal with the zero overall team, as appreciate you guys watching the video. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. It's free. Completely free. Head down there. You got a Google account, YouTube account. You can hit that subscribe button. Benefits me greatly so you guys hopefully don't miss any videos in the future but yeah basically the deal with this is everyone is a zero overall but the lowest it can go is 12 but all of the attributes are absolutely as low as possible and it's like this for mike glennon and every other player now these are actually mike glennon's unedited stats he just is that terrible but for the rest of the players yeah i mean for the most part i tried to get the best Jaguars players off the roster some players had their positions changed like Josh Oliver now is a wide receiver but and Lorente McRae plays left tackle not exactly the best left tackle at like six foot 230 or whatever Lorente McRae is but yeah everyone's a 12 overall the best players are in free agency another team will sign them we're not but zero overall the goal of course is to win a super bowl hopefully multiple by any means necessary this first year we are going to get smashed i almost want to do a test and run like the classic overpowered playbooks in simulation and see how well the team can perform with actual good playbooks with the worst team possible so i'm actually going to try that all right i'm going west coast spread three four storm chicago new york giants zero overall team we're starting from scratch we have no trade pieces and I am the Jags. I, I don't know. I was going to do the Jets for this because the Jets are so terrible. As you can see in the top right, I have the actual Jets roster as my coach name. But um, yeah, I went with the Jags for a little bit of uh, something fresh. But then you're like, oh man, don't you do Jags franchise on your actual YouTube channel? Doing every single game? That series is dead. Don't worry about it. We're doing this new one. Um, but the Jags do have two first round picks. That is one benefit. And the other pick is from the Rams in the Jalen Ramsey trade. But yeah, this team sucks. I'm not re-signing anyone at the midseason mark. But I'm going to see you there anyway. I'll simulate. Just had to make sure that Phil rosters off. Because I don't want any of the actual good Jaguars players that were released into free agency to be signed by this team. Now, we can pick them up later. But we got to start from zero. You got to treat this as not the Jags. But an entirely separate zero overall entity as we simulate to the midseason mark. We might actually score some points because of the overpowered playbooks. I hope to God we don't win a game with this team. I think that'd be super telling of how playbooks matter a ton in simulation. We are 0-7. We got crushed in week eight. It honestly wasn't as bad as we've seen in the past with zero overall rebuild. Only 70 nothing. <laughs> Sounds crazy to say. Some of these games... We're under 60 points against the Dolphins, only 52 nothing. But yeah, uh, our current point differential is not in a great spot. Basically every game, it seems to be about 60 points, I think is a fair average. So we've played seven games, seven times six is what, 42. So we're about 420 points in the negative. Blaze it or whatever, we got Kaepernick. Why did they sign a quarterback? I have Phil Roster off. That's the only player they signed? Do I make a terrible joke that people are actually going to re get really mad over? Yeah, I'm going to do it anyway. This is the only team Colin Kaepernick could actually get signed to. Oh, unsub strike. People can't take a joke. I'm releasing them. All right. Um, should I have not said that? You make a good point. We're 0-7. We have some nice upgrades. Oh, hell yeah, we do. But the problem is when you get to this low of an overall, I don't actually think you can even upgrade the players. I don't think they move. I think there's such a low overall that they actually cannot be upgraded. Because we've tried this before in uh, zero overall rebuild franchise last year, my worst series of all time. I think the idea was okay. It got old quick. As we'll simulate to the playoffs, I have a sneaking suspicion we're not going to be a part of them oh big game against the colts 82 nothing oh and 16 i don't think that's a big shock that this team went oh and 16 uh it was to be expected the preseason went poorly lost uh, 119 to nothing 
the Falcons. Did any of those games go like this in the regular season? We scored points. We had six points on the year. Did I actually have Josh Lambeau? No, I definitely released him. We got Colin Kaepernick back. Well, he wasn't too great. Didn't exactly have great receivers to throw to. But uh, yeah, this team was pretty poor. Do we have anything good? Colin Kaepernick rushed for three yards. He passed for 181 yards. How are these guys getting open and catching the football? They have no attributes. Wild. But we actually didn't get completely shut out. We did score some points. Worst offense in the league. Not a huge shock there. Colin Kaepernick, no touchdowns, 25 picks. 41 completion percentage could be a lot worse. Rushing. Colin Kaepernick was actually the only player on our team to have positive rushing yards. As you can see, Daniel Thomas with a pretty good year to the safety playing fullback. One attempt for zero yards. And the reason I say it's a pretty good year is Craig Reynolds and Nathan Cottrell struggled a little bit. Nathan Reynolds, 92 attempts for negative 46 yards. The receivers, I don't know how Josh Oliver averaged 13.7 yards per reception. I don't know how that happened. I don't know why we can't see drops either. But the fact that he averaged 41 yards per game is ridiculous. Defensively, Doug Middleton, 110 tackles, two for loss. Six from Dakota Allen and Reggie Gilbert led the team. No sacks. We actually had an interception. Josiah Scott had a pick. How? Those are weird looking attributes. So he's, you know what? He probably deserves to have a few interceptions. He has 255 man zone coverage and press. So clearly something didn't compute. <laughs> where the stats or the attributes are completely broken. Ryan Tannehill wins MVP. Well, yeah, he had two games against the Jaguars every episode or every season. Or what the, what did I say? Two games against the Jags uh, this year. Also wins Offensive Player of the Year. I expect to see Derrick Henry in here for the same reason, but I don't. Defensive Player of the Year is Miles Garrett. I don't expect to see any Jaguars in here as Justin Herbert wins Offensive Rookie of the Year. Defensive Rookie of the Year is Logan Wilson. Josiah Scott with his big year at number five wild but yeah it's not about the first season it's really about what we can do after this which is getting rid of everyone starting fresh and starting to add actual good players onto this team and i know this sounds crazy but is keeping colin kaepernick around a good move 20 million a year no <laughs> what why would we give him 20 mil He's a 33-year-old normal development quarterback who's a 76 overall. We have 100 mil to spend in free agency. There's our running back. Do we bring back Miles Jack? I think so. So what do you do when you're a team with, like, actually zero good players? There isn't one good player on the entire team. That's not hyperbole, exaggeration, or anything like that. There are actually zero overall, or zero good players on the team. There's none on the entire roster, zero. You go out and you try to negotiate with every free agent. So <laughs> anyone who is a decent age that I could offer a contract to, and especially the guys who have no offers, Aaron Jones, Kenny Galladay, um, that's it. I tried to get for a really good price. JC Jackson as well was fairly cheap. So I'm trying to really get everybody that could be a staple on this team for a long time. We still have 26, almost 27, uh, 27 million available cap room, which is not good because that means we probably didn't get a lot of the players that I wanted. But we did get Kenny Galladay. We got Josh Allen, who was super cheap. Did not get Jayon Brown. I don't care about that one. We got Miles Jack. We got Jonu Smith. We got JC Jackson. And we got Aaron Jones. So we really got everyone I wanted. And I don't care about Jayon Brown. Now, we need an offensive line. I don't know how we're going to get picks. Terry Godwin out there. Miles Jack is a big addition. We are paying him like an outside linebacker, which is not ideal at all. But he'd be a really, really good pickup to the team. So, of course, we had to go out and get him. And then Josh Allen, not expensive. 24-year-old edge rusher, super cheap contract for him. Like, yeah, there are points where it gets up to like 16 and a half mil in 2025. But overall, it's about 13 million a year, up to 14 
it's super fair. And like, you expect him to probably get deep into the 90s. You'd probably pay him like 20 mil a year at some point. So I'm actually super cool with that. And yeah, I know this is this type of video is not gonna be for everybody, but this is really just doing whatever we can to build a really, really good team in, you know, the scope of Madden, as we'll get Bronson Rex Steiner too. Um, but I'm really trying to be mindful of the ages so that these guys will actually develop a little bit. But of course, we need all the help we can get. Oh, Cam Robinson has got to come back. I know, I don't want to make this team like just the actual Jaguars. I know there are already probably too many Jaguars on the team. But Cam Robinson really isn't that bad of an option. Next round of free agency, got everyone I wanted as well. I mean, they're not big players for the most part. We had to get a little bit different here, considering that we are running a little bit out of money for just this season. And, you know, there aren't exactly top free agents available anymore. But we upgraded the offensive line with the addition of Prince Tega Winogo. He will be playing right tackle. He's bad, don't get me wrong, but... He's a 65 overall, which is a pretty significant upgrade to zero overall, or I guess 12. So that was something that needed to happen. Raekwon McMillan, big upgrade, fits the scheme if we want to play uh, him with Miles Jack on the inside. Damon Harrison is old, but we needed somebody to fill a role, do a job. So he's there for right now. And we just need to have a great draft. NFL draft time. We're going to have the number one overall pick. I cannot take it. I can't. Because the amount of value that we can actually get back for this pick is ridiculous. But also, here's a quarterback. Mid first round guy. So he'll probably actually be pretty good. But I don't think it makes sense to take him when we have so many other needs. It's not like getting a QB right now is going to help us out. Maybe if he was an early first round pick, one of the better players in the entire class, I would consider it. But the amount of value, again, that we can get back for this pick is just so much. So it doesn't benefit me really to take this. What is up with the amount of first round right outside linebackers I'm seeing? This is wild. I mean, Jacob Colvin doesn't want to get picked so bad that he decided just hide. Doesn't even have a picture. Okay. Wow. Also, the amazing uh, corners in this class are wild. I want to take quarterbacks. I wish. But some of these corners are really, really good. I mean, they're stacked at the top. It's not like there's a ton of value down the board. Dolphins picking at number two is actually the best possible team picking here because we can get number two, number nine. And I think I would prefer a first rounder next year instead of a second rounder. I don't know if this will go through straight up. It might be close. Yeah. So I can give more value. It's not like there's a ton of great players down the board. If this goes through, I'd be elated, but not quite. Okay, trading a lot of value here, but I think it's worth it. We're moving the number one overall pick for, well, let me just say our uh, return first before I say what we're actually giving. We're getting number two overall and number nine, as well as a first rounder next year from the Dolphins. We are trading number one overall, a second rounder this year, which is number 33, and a second rounder next year. So a lot of value going away, but I mean, if the Dolphins take a QB, they'd be ridiculously stupid as they take a 72 overall strong safety. And I'm not stressed to take that QB. I think he's going to be pretty good. I do. I don't think he's going to be amazing. I mean, mid first rounder, 23 years old already. He's definitely solid, but is he worth the amount of haul I can get back for this pick? I just don't think so. Trading number two, a fourth rounder this year and a third rounder next year for number three overall and a first rounder next year from Atlanta. I know it's it's somewhat boring to see a lot of trade downs and like this as the Falcons take a sick cornerback. I'm just uh trying to set us up for the future. And if I don't like really want a player available, I'll move down. So that's pretty much what I've been doing. Trading number three for number five and a first next year from the Raiders. I'm ready to pick now. Just wanted to set myself up. We really just need to get a lot of picks because we have a lot of players to get. There goes the quarterback. 74 overall. I'm not too stressed about it. That's pretty good. But again, I'm not not too stressed. Okay, so here's where I am. I think Jamichael Tiller is a pretty good player. 22 years old out of Oregon. Here's the player I actually want, though. Titus Stecker. I just worry that he won't be available at number 9. 
I'm, I'm very worried about that. It's not like he's anything crazy. But, I mean, he looks he looks very, very good and, and well-rounded. So I definitely want him, but will he be available? I'm going to say... I'm going to say we're going to risk it. Maybe he's far enough down that he won't get drafted. I'm going Jermichael Tiller with my first pick. He is the number one overall player in the class. Star or better development. That is an excellent start. 86 speed, 89 acceleration, 81 finesse moves, 82 tackles, 77 pursuit. Zone coverage honestly isn't even that bad for an edge rusher. That is an amazing pick. And we traded down so much and still got the number one overall player in the class. With star or better development. Really could not be happier with that. And the cornerback I wanted is still available. At number 9, Titus Stecker. Welcome to the team. 76 overall, number 5 in the class. Took him at number 9. He's only got normal development, but 93 speed, 77 man, 72 zone, 95 acceleration. Nice hit power at 69. I think we got a pretty good player there as we simulate to number 15. Not going to trade back up. And we don't pick again for a while. For a while. First pick of the third round, so I have to make this one count. I think Kareem McMullen is my best bet. We don't necessarily really need another edge rusher, but if we go like 3-4 storm like I'm looking to do, it certainly would help to get multiple. So I think I am going to do it anyway. Kareem McMullen out of Colorado, 21 years old, 4-5-5-40. He should be amazing. And he is number two in the class. Took him at number 15. Only normal development, but 88 speed. 81 finesse moves, 84 acceleration. Block sheds low. Tackle's pretty good. Pursuit's pretty good. We definitely have something to work with there. And now I have to decide, do I want to move back up at any point for any of these players? I think the best one to move back up for would be Darren Russell. On the interior, how old is he? 21? Yeah, I mean, that's like... Kind of too good to pass up on. How far down the board is he, though? He is 40 some down, I want to say. Oh, maybe even more. Did I miss him? I definitely missed him. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Where'd he go? 28. Okay. Okay, trading a first next year. I don't even remember who that's from. Honestly, it's projected to be number 23. And a third this year for number 29. It's worth it to move up for the center that I want. Cowboys could have easily drafted this guy. Not going to let it happen. Darren Russell, welcome to the team. 75 overall, number 8 in the class. Took him at 29. Only normal development. He's pretty well-rounded. More of a run blocker first than a pass blocker for sure. Decent strength. Nothing crazy, but certainly a pretty good player. Hopefully that receiver is available in the fourth round. If not, it doesn't really matter. I don't think we're going to be ultra competitive this year. We still don't really have a quarterback, which is a problem, but there wasn't one taking in this class as the receiver still is available. I just need to add somebody else to my draft board so I can move these guys around and get this off my screen. But Heath James out of UTEP, welcome. Not going to be anything crazy, but a 72 overall is not terrible. Number 32 in the class, segment 111. Good speed. Overall, solid route running and catching. He's not great, but he isn't terrible. He's okay. Now, is anyone else going to be available who's even okay? And I think... A lot of what we're going to do is diving back into free agency after this. So some third round caliber guys. I don't think offensive line would be the worst call in the world. But don't appear to be any great ones. Uh, defense, not really a whole lot here. So it's either, do we want to take a wide receiver? They're easy to come by, but early second rounders should be pretty high. Montel Sloan is probably going to be the best bet. And then Brandon Ware, like, isn't that great. We'll take another receiver. Montel Sloan out of Georgetown. Welcome to the team. 71 overall, only normal development, unfortunately, but is ranked at number 38 in the class, taking at 129. I mean, he looks pretty similar to the last guy. Not really much of a medium route runner, but is a quick, shifty guy, and I'm usually going to simulate in these spots, but because our team is so bad, I want to take the best player I can at every single spot, as long as we know anything about them. So I am taking every pick. But there's not a lot here unless I'm going to take another receiver which we have 11 active receivers I'm not going to do that I'm going to take a shot at somebody who is unscouted and see what happens let's go Matt Walker 67 overall number 111 in the class took him at 161 he actually isn't terrible can't cover at all 
but he's basically like a linebacker playing safety as we'll have one more pick should we take the highest combine grade i know a lot of people like to do that but i don't think it usually matters here's tyrone moss we need a running back anyway yeah highest combine grade doesn't mean a whole lot you got nice trucking but that's about it tyrone moss not all that good so how'd the draft go for us overall i mean pretty great i think four players at 75 overall and above you'll take that every single time and in the entire nfl seemed to be a pretty good draft class daryl northrup was the only player where i'm like damn would have been nice to have him but he went at number two overall only normal development i'm fine with that i think we got a cornerback who might be even better might be even better because he's 23 i think rcb is only yeah 21 and that does matter so we got three of the top four players in the class i would say overall that was a a massive success and again that quarterback i'm not too pressed about it we'll see what overall he was and if he has a well we see the overall but we'll see if he has good development trait if he does it's like ah damn okay maybe we missed on one there but he didn't look special enough to take him what's his de uh, dev trait we're gonna pretend we didn't see that we're gonna pretend we didn't see that i don't know what it could have been It'd probably just star right yeah probably just star so now is the time where we dive into free agency and try to improve our team that way i kind of forgot we signed aaron jones so moss is just gonna be a backup which is totally fine we do need a quarterback do need a qb but it's really just a uh, left guard will be a big need to upgrade and then defensively i gotta rearrange a bunch of things we're gonna run a three four so i gotta move jack to the inside and raekwon mcmillan to the inside but overall i mean this it actually isn't that bad of a team i know it seems crazy but it's not so bad we had a lot of money we had a lot of picks we got a lot of picks got a lot of good players just got to uh go out and sign some of the best young players not that one it's for damn sure jason burnett not a bad rookie cb to go after for an undrafted guy 67 overall the thing is we don't have any money to do that so what i need to do is go into salaries and get rid of some of these 12 overall players oh yeah we found our guy undrafted rookie free agent qb out of clemson good old howie rivers oh this is the guy this is the qb of the future i'm glad we missed out on that qb we got howie rivers baby 78 overall going into year two led by the man himself howie rivers we got a uh, phil roster on cpu is going to take care of some some positional holes as i move around some of these positions okay so this is how the team's gonna look uh we'll we'll see exactly how it'll look actually after a week here as our cpu uh, we gotta win 35 7 preseason starting off hot but we're gonna see exactly how it looks now that the cpu has picked up some replacement players including caleb beninock what a what a pickup he's no howie rivers and Taysom hills here you are not about to win the job over my guy howie not gonna happen no way no how but defensively why is josh allen on the bench over taco charlton i will never know what is that yeah get that out of here we got deshaun gibson okay i mean we got a team out here is everything the way i want it in specialist no because i want mcmullen rushing the passer he'll be a rush dt if he needs to be we are five and two at the midseason mark led by the greatest rookie quarterback in nfl history howie rivers ain't no river wide enough to keep howie away from a w he's a 66 overall has thrown for almost 2,000 yards nine touchdowns five picks he's not exactly lighting up the stat sheet don't get me wrong but listen it's the same way that some of these talent evaluators come out they don't look at the actual play of the player in college and say you know what ohio state quarterbacks don't ever work out it's not because of previous schemes or a player that was pushed into the starting lineup it's just they went to ohio state they won't be a good quarterback right it's, you know it's all about wins and wins are exclusively a qb stat i know what you're gonna say hey bengal there are 52 other guys on a roster that help win a team a game in the nfl and defense is a big part of that if the defense allows points every single drive there's no offense in the world that can keep up but that's where you're wrong because the quarterback is responsible for hyping the defense up 
And, um, you know, if any time a team loses, it's a quarterback's fault. That's an actual statistical fact. But we're 5-2. and two. Joey Sly is going to be a free agent. And I want him back long term. You can't teach 99 kick power the way you can't teach 99 speed. I see a guy who's faster. doesn't matter if his technical ability is terrible. He's faster. You can't teach speed. Got to be a better player. Joey Sly, seven-year contract. Welcome back. He wants more money, don't we all? All right, we'll deal with these guys later. Joey Sly is really the only one I need back. The rest, don't really care. I'm on one this video, and I'm loving it, honestly. This could be a 10-win team quite easily. I think exactly 10 wins. I don't think 11. I don't think 9. I think exactly 10. We'll see. Surprise me. But not in a bad way. 10 wins. 10 and 6 after a week 17 loss to the Colts, who went 9 and 7. Didn't even win the division. 12th best offense. And look at my man, Howie Rivers, out here setting the passing touchdown record by a rookie. Breaking, shattering 27. He's at 28. Only 12 picks, over 4,000 yards. Aaron Jones, over 1,300 yards, averaging five and a half per carry or thereabout. Nine touchdowns. Tyrone Moss was useless. And then receiving Kenny Galladay, 1,200 yards, 13 touchdowns, and 85 catches. Janu Smith, over 80 catches, over 900 yards, four touchdowns. Montel Sloan was okay. Even Heath James put in a pretty good shift. Defensively, Raquan McMillan, 117 tackles, 13 for loss, two and a half sacks, two picks going off. Damon Harrison had 10 tackles for loss, also seven and a half sacks and led the team. Jamichael Tiller had seven, Josh Allen, five. Not great. Four and a half for the rookie, Kareem McMullen. Three and a half, Taco. Three miles, Jack. Two and a half, Raquan, we got two. Yearly awards, Nick Mullins. Nick, Nick Mullins won MVP, okay. All right, AFC Offensive Player of the Year, Patrick Mahomes. Howie Rivers at number 10. Defensive Player of the Year is Dante Hightower. Miles Jack at 6, Raekwon McMillan at 9. And Offensive Rookie of the Year is Howie Rivers. Montel Sloan, 3. Heath James, 4. Tyrone Moss, 5. I don't know how. Who's voting for him? They need to have their voting rights rescinded. Jamichael Tiller, Defensive Rookie of the Year. Matt Walker, safety at 2. Jason Burnett. Safety? I, I have no idea about some of these guys. At a three, cornerback Tyson, uh, Titus Stecker at four. Kareem McMullen at nine. Who were some of the guys finishing like near the top of the rookie awards for us? Michael Walker is a receiver. Matt Walker is a free safety. Okay. We're not going to jump in here. It's only 2021. We'll see if we can beat the Titans in the wild card. And we don't. 31-24. I was about to say, if we came out here and won a... Super Bowl in only year two? That would have been something else. Joey Sly, more money. All right, he's back long term. I'm going to let Taco walk. I'm going to let a lot of those guys walk. If they got upgraded, it's a different story. But let me see some dev trade upgrades. Howie Rivers didn't get star dev? I mean, that's the robbery of the actual century. 2021, this new, this new year is off to a bad start. If Howie Rivers is not winning, or, well, is not getting star dev when he goes up and wins Offensive Rookie of the Year. It's ridiculous. However, Kenny Galladay did go up a development trait to Superstar as he won Wide Receiver of the Year. So that's great to see. Give him Route Technician as well as uh, Slotomatic, I guess. He is going to play in the slot probably this next year. Jonu Smith up to an 83. Is he developing well? A little bit, probably. That's cool. And then defensively, Miles Jack up to Superstar X Factor. That's what I'm talking about. Great from him. Now, my guy, Jamichael Tiller, only had Star Dev. And he won Defensive Rookie of the Year and didn't go up. I mean, look how they massacred my boy. It's unreal. And then no one else had a uh, dev trade above star, so or even at star. Interesting draft. This next year should be very interesting as well. Everything's always interesting to me. How much money do we have in free agency? That'll be something to look at. 76 mil. So we can get some big players here. And I'm eyeing Jair Alexander. No one's going after him. It's a no-brainer. 
Baker Mayfields here. I would do... It's, it's a lot of money. I would do a two-year contract for Baker Mayfield until we can decide later. I mean, I don't really want him. I'd rather draft a QB. Would I, though? Uh, I'm going to leave that at that. I, I'll, I might make an adjustment in the next window, depending on, you know, thinking about it more. Receiver, I'm just good to hold on with what we have for the time being. So, of course, I would love to sign everybody, but it just can't happen. We don't have, a, you know, infinite money. But we did get J.J. Watt. We got Matt Hawk. We got Baker. Why would you accept that contract? I'm not complaining. I, I, we're paying him nothing compared to what he wanted. Orlando Brown Jr. and Jair Alexander. I mean, we basically have infinite money. We're going after every free agent. And now Baker's on the team. Oh, no. What happened to Howie? I'm going to have to sign Howie Rivers. I forgot. He was an undrafted rookie free agent. It was a one-year deal. We lost Howie, man. Oh, that's devastating. NFL draft time. Picking number three overall, as well as where? 23 and 32. There's a receiver who's just supposed to go number one overall. Looks pretty good. Here's the QB. Late first round guy. What about Pat Swenson? Mid first. Okay, that's looking a little bit better. Probably take him. This is officially the best middle linebacker prospect I've ever seen. Taj Griffey, 4-4-2 speed, amazing bench, and the best top skills I've ever seen. A-plus pursuit, I've never seen it. I've never seen it from, I don't think, any player. So, I'm taking him, no matter what. You guys remember Draft Day? That awful movie that I love for some reason? What was it? Vontae Mack, no matter what? Him. They're both linebackers. And I actually, I think uh, Vontae Mack was played by Chadwick Boseman, too. So that's tough. Unfortunately, passed away. Uh, damn. Took a sad turn. But we pick at number 3 and 23. Am I really going to take a middle linebacker at 3? I, I am. Yeah, absolutely. Taj Griffey, welcome. We don't really need you, but you're going to play over Raekwon McMillan. Looking amazing. 78 overall. Number two in the class, segment number three. Only normal development, but 92 speed. Nice block shedding. 79 hit power, 89 tackle, 90 pursuit. Yeah, I mean, he looks ridiculous. Covers linebacker style. Only 64 zone coverage. 56 man. Now at number 23 overall. QB still available. It's got to be the move. Absolutely has to be. Pat Swenson at a UCF. We have Baker Mayfield, so we don't necessarily need him. 73 overall, normal development. I'm trading him. We're sticking with Baker. Had to take a chance. Had to take a chance. Let's go Max Wolf here out of Penn State. Early, first round safety. Great speed at 446. He's number four in the draft, taking with 32. Only normal dev, as is to be expected at this point. 91 speed, 70 zone, 79 hit power, 82 pursuit, decent man coverage, decent tackling. We'll go with a guard here in the form of Calvin Peterson. Oh, okay. Yeah, absolutely. I'm in. 70 overall. Star better development is the great thing about that. Wow. Not really a run blocker. Doesn't really care about all that. But we'll protect the QB, so that's important. Calvin Peterson. I'm really satisfied with that pick, and I'm only going to take one more. It'll be a D tackle. It'll be defensive tackle depth. I don't really expect anything crazy with this pick. Will Fairley. Not to be confused with Nick Fairley. Did Nick Fairley go to NC State? Why does that sound familiar to me? He went to Auburn. Who went to who was the D tackle from NC State around that time? I mean Mario Williams, obviously, but I think, yeah, John McCargo. Really good at NC State. Played for a little while in the league. That's why I probably couldn't place his name. I don't know why I couldn't remember Nick Fairley at Auburn. That's shocking to me. But I couldn't remember that. Oh, yeah, but we're going to take him. I kind of zoned out. 72 overall, normal dev, number 25 in the draft segment, 151. He's actually pretty good. Real slow, but pretty good. CPU can handle the rest. Who is Marshall? James Marshall. Looks really, really awful, but does have star better development, so... Sure. Boom, straight up. Pat Swenson gets me Darnell Mooney. We got the best receiving core in the league right now. Kenny Galladay, 
Darnell Mooney, it's game over. So this is the team for season number three, I want to say. Some big, big new additions, including Baker Mayfield as our new starting quarterback. Taj Griffey, again, this has got to be the best middle linebacker prospect I've ever seen. Would certainly be an 80 overall if we moved him to outside linebacker as a rookie. So he's kind of incredible. And then we got J.J. Watt out here. I want to give him not run stuffer because I want him to get like 20 sacks if possible. And I hear unstoppable force is good, although I question it. I don't really know. Um... I don't know what's going to happen. Swim club, fine. But uh, yeah, we've got a really solid team here. We've moved Titus Stecker to strong safety. He's man first, but his own coverage isn't bad. So I think he's actually going to be pretty good in there. Got a lot of rookies. Wolf, Griffey, of course. And then on offense, uh, Peterson at right guard. It's a decent team, but we've got the benefit of having some electric playbooks. Darnell Mooney in the slot. Kenny Galladay following in behind. We're going to simulate to the midseason mark, and I expect big things from this team. I'm, I'm thinking six wins at the midseason mark for sure. Well, it for sure was sarcasm, obviously, as we were only three and four. Dude, it's we don't have Howie Rivers anymore. That has to be what it is. Is he just sitting in free agency, or is there a team that actually snagged him? Where is Howie Rivers? He's actually on a team. That's wild. Show me superstar dev for the right guard, please. Star. That's all right. It's kind of what I expected, though. And then defensively, I don't think we drafted anyone who had better than star. Or star or better. Everyone had normal. Classic Madden. Is it Damon Harrison? Wants a contract. No, that's okay. Terry Godwin, Jaleel Scott. Absolutely not to anyone in there. Only three and four. Kind of disappointing here for 2022, but we'll simulate to the playoffs. I think there's a good chance we can still make them, but it's uh, far from a given. Did not make the playoffs. Finished 7-9, and nine, bottom of the AFC South. 12th best offense. Baker Mayfield seems like he played pretty well. 37 touchdowns, and our defense was ranked the same, so we just got more unlucky than anything. Baker really was not bad. Rushing Aaron Jones was quite good, averaging over 5 yards per carry, 1,200 rushing yards, 6 touchdowns receiving. Kenny Galladay went over 1,000, had 9 touchdowns. Darnell Mooney had close to 1,000, 8 touchdowns. Jonu Smith over 800 yards and 10 touchdowns. Defensively, Miles Jack, 119 tackles, 6 for loss, 2 sacks, 3 picks. J.J. Watt, 17 tackles for loss, 16 for Jamichael Tiller, 13 and a half sacks for Watt. 12 for Jamichael Tiller, 6 for Kareem McMullen, 5 for Josh Allen. We got to get him more involved. Got to figure that out. He's a rush end, but he's just not getting the pressure in there. Interceptions, 3 for Miles Jack, 2 for Max Wolf. Yearly awards, I expect to see Baker somewhere in here. Number 8 for MVP. AFC Offensive Player of the Year is Ryan Tannehill. Baker at 7. Defensive Player of the Year, Miles Garrett. Miles Jack at 6, J.J. Watt at 10. Offensive Rookie of the Year is J.P. Parsons. No Jags as far as I can tell. And then Defensive Rookie of the Year is Taj Griffey. You better go up to star. Max Wolf at 3. Who won best linebacker? T.J. Watt. I don't think he's going to go up to star. I think we're going to be terribly disappointed. I really hope that's not the case. But I'm, you know, expecting it now. That's just how Madden 21 works. 85 overall team. Show me some big dev, create, uh, dev trade increases. None on offense. What about defensively? J.J. Watt goes down. Thankfully, we did get one increase. Jamichael Tiller goes up to superstar. How does Taj Griffey not go up in development trade? Wins defensive rookie of the year. It's just ridiculous. Don't really have any money to do anything in free agency, so we're just going to simulate to the draft. I could definitely see us making some moves in the draft. It's the 2023 NFL draft. Going into, of course, the 2023 season, we got to start making some moves. QBs are not exceptional. Number 13 in the draft here, and I think we got to take this receiver. It looks amazing. He's a deep threat archetype, but he also has A- minus short route running, which has nothing to do with deep threat. You'd find that for a slot type receiver, so I think he's going to be extremely well-rounded. He's a number five overall player in the class at 77 overall, which is pretty incredible. Has star better development. I don't know how he's a deep threat, but I mean, his route running is 
very good across the board, but deep route running is the lowest. I mean, Khalid Higgins looks like a future superstar. Aggressive catch trade as well. What a monster. Now in the second round, all of the great centers I wanted are off the board, which is unfortunate to say the least, except for this guy. He's a late first round guy. He's okay. Jared Northcutt's going to be my pick here. Early first round guy. Baller. Skip the combine. Skip the combine merch. Link in the description if you want it. Jared Northcutt. 76 overall. He's a defensive tackle. 6'5", 286. Star better development is so key. Number 6 in the class. Took him at 45. 80 speed. 81 block shed. Doesn't really get after the QB too much. But he's going to play defensive tackle for sure. Excellent Damon Harrison replacement as I'm going to go center here in the third round, almost certainly. Tomas Gomes, 72 overall, normal dev. He actually looks pretty good. A little slow. Good backup. If uh, we lose somebody, he'll step right in and be a replacement. But that's going to be the end of the draft. End of the draft. Look, I got to see the rest of this draft class because this looked really, really solid. So the number one overall player was Dennis Patterson. Star better development. What's going on with this class? Does everyone have it? I don't believe it. James Newman has it too? <laughs> what is going on? There's our player. And there's the great centers that I missed out on. Ashton Hand, Ryland Gray had star better development. I am confused. Does everyone have it now? Was there some huge upgrade? Or update, I mean, to the game. Benji Money looked at him. I am confused. I sure hope so, but I seriously doubt it. Looked at him. I know we, everyone wants me to call him Taj Boner. I'll give it to you. What exactly? Gil Witherspoon. Dorian Hall is another guy I looked at. Everyone has star better depth. I'm overjoyed. But confused. Team's actually looking really nice. Northcutt is a 78 overall D tackle. Got our defense lined up exactly how I want it. Except I still don't really know what to do with Kareem McMullen. Like, he's got 88 finesse moves and just kind of doesn't play all that much because of other players on this team. We can't have like three rush ends, you know? That's just not how it works. There's only two ends on a team that can rush off the edge at the same time. And then offensively, I am super excited about this player, Khalid Higgins. Rookie out of Notre Dame. Looks amazing. He's no Dennis Peoples, don't get me wrong. But looks really, really good overall. So I'm excited to see how this team plays. And specifically how he plays. He'll be in the slot. He should be able to dominate. Voice went out on me a little bit there. I'll do wide receiver training boost. Why not? And we will simulate to the midseason mark. Hey, there we go. 6-2 and two at the midseason mark. Winning the AFC South at the moment. Kenny Galladay is going to be a free agent. As is J.J. Watt and Baker Mayfield and Darnell Mooney and Raekwon McMillan. I tried to trade him, actually. Uh, really couldn't find a good trade partner. But Baker's got to be extended, I think, clearly. I think, clearly. And it's really not going to be too bad. Five years for Baker. He is back in Jacksonville in Duval County. And then Kenny Galladay, I'd be fine with a... I'd be fine with a four-year deal for him. I don't really think that's too bad. He returns. J.J. Watt, probably not going to stay on the team another year. I think if we give him this, he's just going to retire. But he does agree to return. And then Darnell Mooney, awesome third option. We'll keep him around. Raekwon, I'm fine with for right now. Don't really know about him. But show me some sick dev traits. Show me superstars and superstar. I'd be thrilled. Uh, okay. So Khalid Higgins only has star. What about for the defensive tackle? There we go. Superstar dev for Jared Northcutt what i like to see still can't get after the passer at all but he's a good run stopper and that is a, you know that's valuable to an extent let's simulate to the playoffs now should be a playoff team i mean we're six and two i'd be shocked if we didn't win the division but crazier things have happened first round by in 2023 14 and two unreal we started off at a loss to the colts big loss and then wasn't even a really close game against the Chargers. And then one out. Some close games in there for sure. But hey, 14-2. and two, Hell of a record. Hell of a record. Baker Mayfield, 40 touchdowns. Threw for over 4,200 yards. Only six interceptions rushing. 
Aaron Jones averaged five per carry, seven touchdowns, 1,250 rushing yards receiving. Khalid Higgins as a rookie, 91 catches, 1,100 yards, 13 TDs. Great stuff from him. He's playing up uh, quite a bit. Did I really want to do slot? I mean, we might as well. It's the archetype, or it's the scheme fit for the position. And uh, he's already so good. And the CPU is going to upgrade him as a deep threat anyway. Kenny Galladay, great year. Over 1,000 yards, 9 touchdowns. Darnell Mooney, 8 touchdowns as a third option. Johnu Smith was pretty good as well for a tight end. Defensively, Miles Jack, 107 tackles, 3 for loss, 2.5 sacks, 3 picks. Tackles for loss, though, 14 from Jermichael Tiller led the team. J.J. Watt led with 12 sacks, 10.5 for Jermichael Tiller. 7.5 Josh Allen, 7 for Kareem McMullen. Jared Northcutt had 3.5. Jamichael Tiller has casually been awesome. 90 overall here in year three. Really, really good. Josh Allen should be about the same. 93 overall. He's got 95 finesse moves. And uh, some of these guys are going to have to slide inside after J.J. Watt's gone. As Russell Wilson wins MVP. Baker at five. AFC Offense Player of the Year is Baker Mayfield, though. He might go up to Superstar X Factor, you know. Defense Player of the Year is Miles Garrett. No Jags. Offensive Rookie of the Year is Khalid Higgins. Hey, there we go. That's got to be a dev, trade, a dev trade increase to superstar. And then defensive rookie of the year, Jared Northcutt at five. Jamario Hooker at 10. Best QBs, Baker. You got to go up to superstar X Factor. Man, if Cleet Higgins went best receiver, he would absolutely go up. So he might not. Best D-line, nothing. Best linebacker, nothing. Best DB goes to Nikel Roby Coleman. Got best kicker, though, in Joey Sly. So that's something. Divisional round of the playoffs. Who we got? The Chargers, they crushed this already. J.J. Watt's going to retire. I mean, I'll take that morale boost. Twest, uh, plus, I say twest. That's not anything. Plus 20 morale for the entire defense. J.J. Watt still never won a championship. He's got maxed out morale, though. What does that put him at for overall? Into the 90s? He's been a 90. He's 92 now with morale. All right, J.J., get after it. Hopefully we can beat the Chargers in the divisional and move on to the AFC Championship, and we do. 42-7. Uh, we're showing out. It's the Bills. Bills are a pretty good team. We're going to jump in here. They went 13-3 and as well. What's their team overall? 85 to our 89? Take them out. Playoff time. We're up 7-0 early. Bills answer with a field goal of 7-3, but we get a field goal of our own and make it 10-3. Now 17-3 after a touchdown, but the Bills get one of their own. 24-10 to end the first half. We are on cruise control right now. 27-10. Oh, it's game over. It's 30-10. 33-10. We're going to jump in, see if anyone can make some plays. You can't throw at Jair. One-on-one, -on -one, Stefan Diggs versus Jair Alexander. Advantage, Jair. We got Khalid Higgins on a run here. He breaks a tackle. They're going for the football hard. <laughs> we better not fumble. Baker, dime to Darnell Mooney. We're having fun now. This really is just Jags franchise. We have Bronson Rexsteiner, Aaron Jones. We lobbed that deep. We have a step, and we got him. Touchdown, Darnell Mooney. Burned him over the top. What a throw from Baker. 51-yard touchdown. And that's going to be all we do in this game. It is over. 40-10. to 10. Baker Mayfield, Josh Allen. That's where they are. That's like a levels type thing. Didn't really show that well. It looks like I'm trying to do like an Egyptian thing. We're not going to recreate it. Super Bowl time. Who is in our way and get them out of the way? Trains coming through. Get off the tracks. It's the Seattle Seahawks. We have some dev trade increases. I would almost guarantee it since we're in the Super Bowl now. Khalid Higgins goes up to superstar. Well-deserved. Return man? No. Absolutely not. But there we go. Offensive Rookie of the Year. Superstar Dev. How does Baker not go up in development trade? QB of the Year. Offensive Player of the Year. Still Superstar Dev. That is wild to me. Ooh, defensively, J.J. Watt. Back up to Superstar Dev. Not that it matters. It certainly doesn't. Would be nice to see, like, some of our normal development players go up instead of players that are leaving the team right after this game. But it is what it is. Can't always get what you want. 
But if you try sometimes, you just might find you get what you need. As we got the Seahawks, 85 overall. They got DK Metcalf up to Superstar X Factor. Not really a shock there. Russell Wilson, Jamal Adams. Let's crush him. Early 7, make it 10 nothing lead, but the Seattle Seahawks are fighting. Making it after that score, 13-10 Jaguars. End of the first half coming up here. We got a field goal, making it 16-10. Seahawks take the lead, and then they extend the lead, but it's 24-24 in the fourth quarter. Seahawks go up 31-24. We got just under four minutes to play. I'm jumping in. Baker Mayfield near the goal line. We got Khalid Higgins. Should be lighting up from the slot. We're rolling out with Baker. All right, it's now or never. One minute to play. No timeouts. Down by a touchdown. I mean, we got such a fast release. I just got to throw it away. Um, I just don't think Baker can really make that throw. It was Khalid Higgins, I believe. They just kind of burned immediately. They're not going to fall for play action, and why would they? Just going to throw it deep. Higgins, go up and get it! What a snag! On the run, finding Aaron Jones. Just get out of bounds. Get out of bounds. There we go. 17-yard line. I was going to try and run there, but... I mean, I just think that was too open not to go to it. I'm looking at Higgins. Back left corner of the end zone. Great release. Can Baker throw it? Bullet! Khalid Higgins, touchdown! Dude, that's the fastest throw I've ever seen. Do we get crazy here? Or do we play for OT? I think we just play for OT. They're going to review it. There's nothing to review. We're in. Yeah, it's upheld. We're just going to take the field goal. Play for overtime. No reason to get crazy here. Thank God I actually hit it. 31-31. We're playing for OT. Overtime. We're starting out on defense. Touchdown wins the game. Not a good time for mistakes, so I kind of just have to account for DK Metcalf. You just really not let him get deep. Tony Pollard breaks a tackle. Oh, no. Third and 11. So much on the line for the Seahawks. They're running a screen. I'm all over it. Big tackle. Way to go, Taj. That's how we make a play. Seahawks now going to punt. Taj Griffey comes up huge with the tackle. And that is a pretty good punt from Michael Dixon. Pinning us at the 14. Got a long way to go. But also, a field goal wins the game. Johnny Smith, take, a deep, take us deep. That's open. It's Higgins. Khalid Higgins. Oh, he took a huge shot. Thank God he didn't fumble. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That could have been so bad. Motioning in Darnell Mooney. He's coming across. And he's just going to sit down. Oh, throw out a sack. But we got it to Darnell. First down. I think we have a crazy play designed here. This could be so good. Bobby Wagner's blitzing. Oh, my goodness. Are you kidding me? What just happened? Oh, that's a laser. That's a laser beam. Baker Mayfield to Jonu Smith. Tight end just a little bit too fast for the aging Bobby Wagner. How old is he now? He might not even be that high of an overall. Probably isn't. He might be like, what, 34 in 2020? I don't even know what year we're in exactly. Aaron Jones, big carry. Field goal wins the game. But I don't want to risk having it get blocked. I know how Madden operates. Always looking to screw me over. Don't want it to happen. Rolling out. And we had separation there. Give me a block. Stepped out at the three. We had the touchdown. I just didn't want to risk the hit. We're not going to Seahawk ourselves against the Seahawks. On the goal line, we run the ball. Aaron Jones is stopped. Okay. Well, we weren't on the goal line. We're close. So close that we're going to try it again. Just got to watch out for Bobby Wagner. If somebody blocks him, we're fine. Jones into the end zone. Touchdown. Super Bowl one. Jags are going to hoist the Lombardi from zero to hero. There we go. I haven't been waiting to use that line, but it felt like a pretty good time to take that one out. 37-31 is your final in overtime. Dan Quinn back with the Seahawks, this time not as a coordinator, but as the head coach. Interesting hire. I think Dan Quinn would be a, a pretty good coordinator again. I'm not sure about head coach after we've seen what the Falcons have done over the years. Man, that's a talent team that just doesn't perform over the years but Wilson once again tastes the bitter defeat 
of a Super Bowl loss. The zero overall Jaguars are victorious. Miles Jack, the player of the game, had an interception return for a touchdown, eight tackles. There you go. Should we do another season after this? I think so. I think so, just for fun. Try to repeat. We got a solid team together. JJ Watt's not going to be here next year. But he finally wins the Super Bowl as Kenny Galladay, Baker Mayfield, Miles Jack, and Aaron Jones hoist Lombardi. The zero overall Jags have managed to go from the very bottom. Worst team in NFL history by a mile to now the best team in the league. And it's well-deserved. I'll see you for the final season. Is J.J. Watt done? Yeah. Bye, J.J. Tough time for one of the best players. I don't even want to say one of the best players to play defense in history. One of the best players in NFL history. I think for sure. One final season. J.J. Watt will not be a part of it. So he's going to have uh, pretty big shoes to fill. Whoever it is that replaces him. Raekwon's done. The rest we don't really need. It's so sad because when you're seeing the team overall with the morale increases, it looks amazing. And then we're going to come back down to earth so hard. We have like just like high 70s and mid 80s for most of our positions. Instead of like everyone's a, an 80 plus and some into the 90s. It's going to be sad. No more J.J. Watt, of course. But I think that Kareem McMullen can fill that role pretty well as a rush D tackle. We got North cut out here. He's going to go up. What's his power and finesse moves? It's so bad. Let's do power rusher. But going into the draft, we know we need to upgrade our defensive line. I cannot believe Taj Griffey has never gone up in development trait. Shocking. Like, it really is. And then, do we need anything on offense? I mean, receiver looks really good now. It's not quite so good because of our morale boosts. I don't really know. It's tough to tell. Maybe a good tackle. I'm not really sure what our financial situation is going to be. JJ Watt's like 20 mil off the book, so we should be able to do something. 24 mil. Fletcher Cox is here. That'd be quite a good player to get for our D-line. Could get Isaiah Simmons. Because we could use an upgraded safety. He would be a really good one. Or maybe we can get both. Fletcher Cox and Isaiah Simmons. That would be pretty good. Yeah, Bobby Wagner, by the way, down to a 79 overall. Tough. He got exposed in the Super Bowl. Okay, Fletcher Cox is way too expensive. We just can't get him. We'll draft somebody. I'll sign Isaiah Simmons. Give him a monster contract. And we got him. Welcome to Jacksonville, Isaiah Simmons. And with that, Titus Stecker can move back to cornerback. As now we have three really solid corners. JC Jackson, Jair Alexander, and Titus Stecker. I think it makes our defense a whole lot better. We got a good free safety in Max Wolf. He looks really well-rounded. So now, again, it's defensive line or, like, right tackle. NFL draft time. The last one of this video. Let's make it a good one. I'll trade up. I'll do whatever I want if I need to. Picking number 32. Yeah, that's not going to last. Well, this could be sick. Early first rounder as well. JD McLean, 6'3", 211, 21 years old. Ran 4.47 as a throw power. His accuracy might be a little bit questionable, but he looks amazing. Could go with Patrick Mahomes here. 4.48 four, speed from a tight end. Pretty good for Mahomes. I mean, what are these draft classes for middle linebackers lately? Amazing. 6'4", 245, ran 4.44. Four, four. Great top skills. Early first rounder. Tevin Law is kind of the same deal. Not quite as tall, but great athlete. Early first round middle linebacker. They are begging for me to switch to a 4-3. And I'm considering it just based off one player in the draft or two. I mean, this draft is just stacked on the defense side of the ball. It is crazy. Uh, great QBs. Probably not going to end up taking. We have Baker. Like, what's the point? I mean, if the QBs somehow fall, we can talk about it. And they might. There goes J.D. McLean, 75 overall. Haven't had to trade up into the top 10 so far for a player I wanted. But it's now time to check the draft board again. Uh, who's the first player I really actually want? I mean, not until later. 
Oh, we're in a great spot. I'm just going to simulate to our pick. If I trade up for any picks, it's going to be like in the second round. So I'm good here. Archer Bailey is still available. I was hoping that safety would still be there, but he's not. So that kind of sucks. So we either go with a backup QB. He looks like he'd be amazing. I get that. I'm just going to take the QB. Archer Bailey, 75 overall, number four in the draft. Took him at 32. Star better development. He's got good general accuracy. Throw power isn't anything crazy. It's pretty good. And then 81 speed. He is the definition of well-rounded. I mean, it's just crazy because the current personnel on the team is begging to be a 4-3. I don't really need Tevin Laws. Richard Burr would be good. Mid first rounder. Wouldn't be too pissed if we missed him. The next player I really, really want is just the middle linebacker who is a 6'4, 245. Built like a Mack truck. I'm not even going to bother trading up. We're just going to pick from here. Draft board. Middle linebacker is still available. JJ Coward out of Ohio State. Welcome to the team. Only a 75 overall, but ranked at number nine in the class. Took with 64. Only normal development, but 91 speed, 85 tackle, 85 hit power at 6'4", 245. I mean, is this not the ideal Madden user if linebackers were good this year? I mean, he looks ridiculous. Let's go TJ Morrell here out of Texas. Late first round guy, only 21 years old. Looks decent enough. Number 29 in the class, took him at number 96. 71 overall. Decent finesse moves and good speed. Pretty good player. I mean, 76 finesse moves coming out is actually quite good. The last pick is going to be a defensive tackle who's supposed to go a lot later. He's just a good depth pickup. Nothing crazy. Paul Meadows out of pit. 73 overall. Number 15 in the class. Took him at 128. Only normal dev. 89 strength. 78 blocks. 73 power moves to go with 69 speed. Nice. He's actually pretty good. Actually pretty good. You know, I'm doing it. I'm going... I'm going 4-3. Super successful last year, but I'm going probably, what, Cincinnati base 4-3 or Cleveland, something like that. I mean, we had such a good defense last year last year with 50 sacks. I feel like it's a huge mistake to switch. I'm going back. I'm going back. I'm sticking 3-4 I'm sticking Storm. Also, I think I changed Cincinnati to Chicago, or Chicago to Cincinnati. It's going back to Chicago. I just got to figure out exactly how I want to set up the defense. Like, Cohort's a great backup. Not going to play a whole lot. And then I need a good right end. So, I mean, I don't really know what to do. Like, does does Josh Allen move down and then maybe Cohort moves to left outside linebacker? Where Griffey moves outside or something like that? Actually, you know what? I think, does Taj Griffey moves outside linebacker? He's got 65 finesse moves. 68 zone coverage. It's either him or uh, Coward here. There's a joke about Coward to be made somewhere in there. I don't know. We're just going to move JJ out there. He's not quite as good as the last JJ we had on our team. He should do a job, though. 77 overall. Not too bad. So the team for the final season. I spent way too long setting this up as if we didn't just win the Super Bowl and it doesn't really matter what happens. Pretty solid team. Offensive line could be better. And then defensively... I think it looks pretty great. Changed around all the specialists. Josh Allen is going to be a rush T tackle to get McMullen and Tiller coming off the edge. It's not going to be fair. It shouldn't be fair. Khalid Higgins, Kenny Galladay, back to back in the slot. We're simulating to the midseason mark. Show me an undefeated team. Almost certainly won't happen, but you can dream. Okay, definitely not going to go undefeated. We're four and three. So that's... Not exactly where we want to be. At all. But I don't know. Maybe something will change and we'll make the playoffs and then sweep. We made the playoffs. 12-4. and four. Big turnaround. Just crushed the Dolphins 45-3 in the Week 17 matchup. Best offense in the league. Baker Mayfield had to have won MVP with those numbers. Best defense in the league too. Baker, 4,600 yards. 39 touchdowns. 11 picks. Rushing. Aaron Jones over 1,200 yards, eight touchdowns, averaging over five per carry. Receiving, Khalid Higgins over 1,000 yards, 12 touchdowns. Johnny Smith over 1,000 yards, eight touchdowns. Galladay at almost 1,000 yards, seven TDs. Aaron Jones had more receiving yards than Darnell Mooney by a little bit and had way fewer catches. Mooney with six TDs, though. Defensively, Miles Jack, 105 tackles, seven for loss, one and a half sacks. 
Kareem McMullen, 15 tackles for loss. Josh Allen is a rush D tackle at 13 sacks. Nine and a half for Jermichael Tiller. Seven and a half for Jared Northcutt. Seven for Kareem McMullen. Cowart had two and a half interceptions. Four for Max Wolf. Three for Matt Walker. How are you playing so much? Two for Titus Secker. Yearly awards. Baker Mayfield wins MVP. AFC Offense Player of the Year is Baker Mayfield. Defensive Player of the Year, Miles Garrett. That happens every time. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Rashad Thomas. Cam Lindsley at five. Lucas Humphreys. Defensive Rookie of the Year, Tevin Laws. The middle linebacker I didn't draft. Instead, I drafted J.J. Cowart, but I drafted him way later. So it was worth it. We made the playoffs. That sounded... Why does that sound so weird? Playoffs had like a lot of... A lot of... Ugh, a lot of gross stuff in there. We're gonna... Like in the words... In the sound it came out of my mouth, it was terrible. I don't know what I'm talking about. This is a weird end of the video. But uh, hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed already for more weirdness. Couldn't repeat as Super Bowl champions, unfortunately. But Baker Mayfield definitely went up to Superstar X Factor. This is the final team whenever you're ready. Baker Mayfield, Superstar X Factor. Good thing we decided to keep him and not draft a QB. And look at the QB we drafted it. Archer Bailey, just a casual superstar X-Factor waiting to take over for when Baker's done. Khalid Higgins into the 90s with morale. We're just going to pretend like it's just into the 90s anyway. Offensive line looking nice. And then the defense, Josh Allen, superstar X-Factor. Kareem McMullen goes up to star. This was a really good team. 90 overall is the final. But yeah, thank you guys so much for hitting that subscribe button. Helps me out a lot. It's completely free. And I appreciate you when you do it. Let me know in the comments section below what you want to see next. And I will see you guys in the next one. Take it easy. Joke, I'm laughing so loud. Speed burst good.